Look, about to motivate, make the stakes higher Take your worst hours, time to pay piper With a squadron at a swim across the lake of fire Just to add another brick to the empire What's going on guys, this is Kazi. Welcome back to another epic video. And in this video, we're not gonna be grading just one shot or even two shots or three shots, four shots, five shots. We're gonna be grading six shots from completely different cameras. And best part about this process is not only that you can grade really fast, this technique takes full advantage of your camera's color science. Before Resolve 17, it was rocket science to set up your color management properly. Now it's a cakewalk. If you're a beginner filmmaker who wants to make their work stand out, color grading is one of the most effective ways to do that. If you're coming from Premiere Pro or Final Cut 10, then looking at a node-based software like Resolve will just confuse the heck out of you. In this free training, you're not only gonna learn everything about nodes, you will also learn to build the perfect node tree regardless of the project that you're working on. I will end the session with an extended Q&A. These questions came from you guys. Click the link in the description to sign up for this free training. And guys, if you're enjoying the content, you know what to do, smash that like button. It will mean the world to me. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and let's roll the intro. All right, let's get this party started. It's 2 a.m. I'm gonna try to get this video out by 6 a.m. So let's see if we can make this happen. As promised, we have six shots right here, ready to go, okay? And we have a couple of them in ProRes 422, which is 8-bit. We have a couple in HQ, which is 10-bit, and then we have one red clip, okay? Which I should, um, I don't know, okay, there you go. So now there's nothing applied to it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this video down into four simple steps for you. It's gonna be crystal clear and it will make a lot of sense, okay? First step, let's go into our project settings and see what's going on. When you go under color management, this is what you're gonna see as default, okay? So it's set to DaVinci YRGB as your color science and timeline color space is set to Rec. 709. Basically, it's not managed right now. You can manage your timeline by your node tree, okay? So this is how you can do it right now. You can throw a color space transform and turn it into whatever you want. It's not managed, and that's what needs to be fixed first. So let's go back into our settings. So what I need you to do is click on this color science guy and just select color managed. Now we are managing everything before it gets into our timeline. We're saying, hey, bring everything as SDR Rec. 709. So keep everything in that color space. And then when you output it, output it to Rec. 709 gamma 2.4, which is perfect for broadcast and internet, web, anywhere, YouTube, Vimeo, you name it, okay? So these are the settings. It's already set. As soon as you put it in color managed, and like I said, it's a cakewalk compared to what it used to be. That's all you need to know. Don't worry about the other flavors. Maybe I can make more videos and go in detail. Now, the beautiful thing about setting everything up in color managed is this. SDR grading environment can be mapped to HDR for output. So you are basically future-proofing yourself even if you keep this to SDR. Don't think that, hey, what if tomorrow I wanna turn it into HDR? It's telling you, spelling it out for you that, hey, you can, okay? So this is step number one. Like I told you, pretty simple. And once you set it, you can even save it as a preset and then you have it, okay? So let's go ahead and hit save. Now, let's move on to our step number two, which is which camera your footage is shot with. Okay, that is vital. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions around RCM out there where people just go, once you set everything into Resolve Color Management, automatically your clips get converted to Rec. 709. That is not true. That is true, but I will tell you what it means in step number three. So right now, let's stay on step number two where we need to find out more information about our camera. So if I click on my metadata right here, this I button, which is for info, it doesn't really tell us much. I mean, it tells us that, hey, this is 10 bit, it's ProRes 422, but it doesn't really give us anything more than that. So one way to get that information is go under edit, 
scroll this down and uh, go under your metadata. And as soon as you select your clip, you get this information, which is very similar to what we were looking at. But if you click on this guy right here, you can change it to camera. Now, the problem with consumer cameras is that it doesn't really record all the necessary information that you need, but that won't be the case when we click on this because this is shot on Alexa Mini. So we can see it, Alexa Mini, we see frame rates, shutter, ISO, color temperature, we see the camera update, we see the lens used. I mean, it gives us every single bit of information that we need. So we know exactly which cameras used and all that good stuff. So we're good here, okay? When we go here, we don't know anything. When we go here, we don't know anything. So what do you have to do? We don't know anything. When we go here, we know because this is shot on red, gives us all the information. Again, even tells you about the lens used. Very important information. Now, what can we do when stuff like this happens? You need to get a spec sheet from the producer. You need to ask them, hey, what kind of cameras were used? Can I? Can you get me in touch with your DP? And then you can get that answer. So it's not that hard, but it's a good practice as a colorist to know that that's something that you have to figure out. Okay, so anticipate that. Now, I fortunately know which camera is which because I downloaded this footage from ArtGrid. So I know this one is uh, Fuji X-T3. This one is Ari Alexa Mini, which we saw. This one is Blackmagic Pocket 6K. This one is C200. And then this one is shot on red. We can even see that there. And then this one is Sony A7S R3. So I told you, I picked out the hottest cameras in the market to show you this process. And it's going to blow your freaking mind. Get pumped. We're getting into step number three right now. Step number three, we are ready to go. All you need to do is make sure that you pop this open so you can see your clips. We're going to start off with our first clip. Right click, go under input color space. And since we know that this is shot on Fuji X-T3, I'm going to go under Fujifilm F-Log. And as soon as I click it, boom. Okay, let's look at the scopes. Uh, I'm going to reset it again so we can actually see it. So now we're looking at our log. I right click, I go under my input color space. As soon as I click on Fujifilm F-Log, it's converted. Done. Look at this, how beautiful it is. And I gotta be honest with you, I am blown away by the way it looks. I mean, this looks so good. Now guys, look at it. Fastest way to grade, right? You're done, that's it. Okay, if you say my blacks are really crushed, we can fix that, but right now I don't wanna get into that. First, I'm going to show you how to convert each clip from different cameras, and then we're going to go back and do primary adjustments. But just look at that. One click, and we are ready to export this. Like, Look at all the colors. Camera manufacturers put in a lot of time and effort in developing their color science, and that's why each camera has its own characteristic, its own personality. So you can see how beautiful this looks. I mean... Fujifilm has been developing film forever, and you can just look at their color science. It's gorgeous. Now let's move on to the, our next shot, which is Alexa. Again, rinse and repeat. So we're going to go back in here, input color space, and I'm going to go to RE Log C this time. And boom, done. Look at the scopes. We are ready to go. Let's move on to the next shot. This is Blackmagic Pocket 4K. I'm going to go back into input color space. I'm going to go find Pocket 6K film. Boom. Okay. We're going to move on to our Canon C200. And I'm going to park it somewhere around here. Right click. And I'm going to go find Canon Cinema Gamut, Canon Log 2. I'm ready to go. Look at my scopes. Now, the thing that you need to understand is that you only have to convert log footage, which is converted to ProRes or something like that. But if you have raw clips, they're going to get converted automatically, okay? Resolve is going to do that for you. So yes, if you shoot in RE RAW, Blackmagic RAW, if you shoot in Canon RAW, if you shoot in any of the cameras in their RAW settings, it will get converted automatically. So in this case, this is already Rec. 709. Now we're going to move on to our Sony. 
and we're gonna right click input color space and get ready for this okay as soon as i go to this is s gamut 3 cine s lock 3 as soon as i go there i mean just look at the skin tones usually you don't get that from sony but once you convert it properly you get beautiful skin tones so yes it's a bit overexposed blah 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 now that's what we're gonna get into in our step number four which is primary correction or what's commonly known as a base grade all right step number four we're gonna do our base grade nothing extravagant just we're gonna get the image ready for proper grading okay so what do i see when i look at this image i feel like we can pull up the blacks a little bit right and we can see it in our scopes too they're kind of crushed so i'm gonna go under my offset and i'm just gonna raise it up a little bit i'm not doing too much okay i'm just raising it up enough something like that and i'm leaving it right there if i do before and after my image is ready to go because the more i raise it the more pop i'm gonna get rid of like this saturation this these colors i'm gonna start ruining them so i don't want to do that so i'm gonna keep it somewhere around here and uh i feel pretty good about it i mean i'm gonna actually just keep it somewhere around here and it looks really good maybe bring it up a little bit just something like that i'm not doing anything more than that to this image and just look at it i mean i told you the the fuji film is blowing my mind right now i mean i'm about to pick one up like i want this camera i mean just look at how gorgeous it is it's perfect so good all right let's move on to our second shot so what do we need to do here i mean we honestly don't really need to do much there's the right amount of warmth everything is looking good but let's just say we want to get the right white balance. All we can do is just grab the white balance picker right there and just go click on the wall in the back. Done. Like our white balance is completed. Okay. Now, if you think, okay, this was a bit much, we can go in our key mode and we can just split the difference. We can go to like about 50%. And now it's corrected halfway. But once again, the shot is ready to go. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Now, what do we need to do on this one? I feel like this one can use a little bit of work because it's just barely touched, it feels like. So what I would do is I'm gonna go click on my editable splines, turn those on. I'm gonna click right here. I'm gonna grab it. Let's try it again. I'm gonna grab it from here and try to raise it just to kind of add a little bit of a punch. But I still like the high key look, so I want to kind of keep it there, okay? So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to add a little bit of contrast. I want to add some drama, but I want to keep that film kind of contrast thing that they got going on. So I'm going to just do something like that. I don't want to do more than that because I think it's really nice the way it looks. Maybe we can take the highlights and just try to push it a bit more but nothing too drastic. So maybe something like that. I don't want to push it more than that. If I do anything more, I feel like it's going to be a bit much because it just looks so good as is. Now, obviously you can add more saturation, stuff like that, but I feel like it just looks very film-like if I just leave it to this. Beautiful color science from Blackmagic, huge fan. Let's move on to our Canon. And uh, here, what we can do is we can take our gamma and kind of bring it down right so then we can start seeing some information in our mid-tones so this is looking pretty good big difference right and now i'm just going to create a new node once again i'm just going to do a little bit of a pop with my contrast i'm going to take this keep it somewhere around here and then this is what's going to give us that film look so maybe somewhere around here let me just bring it back a little bit. Split the difference. So let's see how it looks. So something like that. And then I don't know what else you guys want to do, but what we can do is uh, we can go in here and pull the reds down a little bit, right? Just kind of give it a bit more of a film look and then kind of twist it and add maybe more gold than red. So if I do before and after in this node i think it's looking pretty good and let's go back in here in our 
curves right here. I'm just going to go and grab them from right here and kind of pull it down. I feel like this just looks better. I mean, this is where, where we were, which was the Rec 709. And then this is where we are for our base grade. So I feel like it's in a good spot for us to do whatever we want with it. It's in good shape. So let's move on to the next one. Now, in this case, this is shot in raw. So we can go in here and click on clip. And we can just go ahead and raise the uh, saw a little bit. And then that's just going to do it natively instead of us doing it here. That's the beauty of raw. And then at that point, I mean, it's already looking gorgeous. All I can do here is, again, just go under my curves and really try to push it like something like this. And let me see. And just like really open it up. I, I want to kind of give it a high fashion look right so like just open it up even more and then let me just see something like that i mean that looks cool and what we can do is just a quick temp i mean i want to add a little bit more warmth in her skin tones because i feel like she's picking up so much yellow from the background that it's just kind of making her look like she has jaundice and then cool it off a little bit and that's not looking too bad right again we're just doing a base we're not getting into our secondaries that much we don't want to do too much okay let's move on to this shot i'm going to park it somewhere around here and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to take my offset and i'm going to bring the whole shot down a little bit not too much so i'm going to park it Somewhere around here. And come on, this is shot on a Sony. Just look at how gorgeous it looks. Everything's protected. Look at the skin tones. I mean, do I have to do anything else? I mean, for my base, I don't think so. So, I mean, everything is protected. Everything looks gorgeous. Again, our first shot, second shot, third shot, all different cameras, different personalities. And grade was achieved by doing barely anything. I mean, skin is kind of bugging me here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under my curves. And I'm just going to pull her out a little bit like that. Even something like that doesn't look bad. I'm going to bring the reds down. Just something like that. And then let's look at our final shot. And there you have it, guys. <laughs> All right, let's check these out in full screen. Look, about to motivate, make the stakes higher. Take your worst hours, trying to pay Piper. With a squadron at a swim across the lake of fire. Just to add another brick to the empire. Now you clearly saw how effective this process is, especially in this day and age where we're working with multiple cameras on a shoot. And I'm not talking about like same manufacturer. You could have like a Sony camera with Canon, GoPros, stuff like that. So sticking with this process could be a game changer. And don't forget, this is just the tip of the iceberg. If you really want to deep dive, I have a free training. Link is down below. It's going to teach you everything that you need to know about Resolve's Node Tree. And that's one of those things that when you're switching from Premiere Pro or Final Cut 10, it's like the hardest concept to grasp. I break it down in the simplest way possible in my training. Link is down below. Check it out. On that note, smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. I will see you guys in the next video.